Bonjour, I'm Gabriel. I'm a PhD student from the European Laboratory in the Thales IT set. And today, I will propose you a new loss function that maximizes the success rate of a neural network trained to perform sidechain attacks. This work is a joint work with Lilian Bossu and Amory Abrar from the European Laboratory and Alexandre Venelli and François Dassens from NXP Semiconductors. But first, what's the point with sidechain attacks? So to understand this concept, let's take a look at an example. So let's assume that an adversary has access to a physical device in which a cryptographic algorithm like, for example, IES is implemented and such that she can configure the secret key and the plain text to perform an encryption, such that, obviously, the goal of the adversary is to recover the sensitive information manipulated during this operation. So, to perform a side-channel attack, she needs one probe, here an EM probe and one oscilloscope at least, such that during the encryption, she can capture a physical trust that directly depends on the sensitive information manipulated by the cryptographic module. And because she can perform as many encryptions she wants, the adversary can generate plenty of physical trust and thus find some leakages related to the secret she wants to retrieve. In the deep learning based side channel attacks, the adversary generates a neural network to automatically match a physical trust with the correct target sensitive value such that this attack can be decomposed into two parts, a profiling phase and an attack phase. So first, in the profiling phase, the adversary trains a neural network to predict the correct sensitive information she knows based on the physical traces generated in the previous slide. So when this phase is performed, the adversary can predict the intermediate variable on a target device containing a secret she wants to retrieve. So during the attack phase, by using a new set of physical traces, she can compute the probability of observing each key hypothesis, but unfortunately, one physical trust is not enough to retrieve the correct targeted value. Hence, the adversary has to predict the score related to each key hypothesis multiple times to finally aggregate all the predictions and recover the secret key value. So one way to evaluate the efficiency of a neural network is to assess the benefits of the applied loss function to optimize the attack performance. But what is the classical learning metric used in deep learning based side channel attacks? So the most widely used loss function is called cross entropy and its equation is reminded here so that to get a clear overview of, it, of its impact during the training process, let's back to our previous example. So here the adversary generates a set of physical traces such that she knows the targeted value manipulated by the device under test. So during the profiling phase, the neural network output a set of score related to each hypothetical value such that the ITES its score, the ITES the probability of observing the related value. But however, to fit with the maximum likelihood distinguisher, the scores has to be converted to a probability distribution. Thus, an additional function called softmax function is applied in order to convert the scores to a normalized probability distribution. So through the minimization of the cross entropy loss function, the adversary asks the neural network to maximize the probability of observing the correct output with respect to each hypothetical values. Thus, minimizing the ranking loss function seems suited to conduct sidechain attacks. But concretely, how should the loss function be minimized? So to perform such minimization, the adversary employs some optimization algorithm based on the gradient descent principle. This technique consists in iteratively updating the trainable parameter theta of the neural network based on the gradient of the loss function. So concretely, given a neural network with two parameters theta0 and theta1, we can plot the evolution of the cross entropy loss function depending on the value of both trainable parameters. So through this plot, we can see that depending on the initialization of theta0 and theta1, the optimization algorithm can reach local minimum, or in the best case scenario, it can reach a global minimum. So to obtain the most efficient parametric model f theta, the adversary expects 
the gradient descent algorithm to converge throughout the global minimum. But unfortunately, this solution cannot be ensured, and in this talk, the resulting error is called optimization error. More formally, it characterizes all the errors induced by the learning process, from the selection of the finite model space to the error induced by the optimization algorithm. So, to obtain the most efficient model, the goal of the adversary is to find a solution that maximizes the success rate metric for a minimum number of attack traces. Thus, the gradient descent algorithm should update the trainable parameter theta in order to penalize the errors provided on the success rate. So let's see if the penalization term induced by the cross entropy loss function perfectly fits with this maximization problem. So here, two scenarios can be observed. First, if the derivative is computed with respect to the targeted class, then the penalization term should reflect the impact of each irrelevant score on the correct output. And this is exactly what the cross entropy does as it penalizes the related output with respect to the probability error. Then, if the derivative is computed with respect to the untargeted class, the penalization should be only dependent on the score's distance between j and k stars, such that indeed, following the success rate metric, the adversary aims at maximizing the score of k stars with respect to each wrong hypothetical values. But unfortunately, as illustrated in this slide, the derivative considered by the cross entropy loss function does not perfectly reflect the relative order of the untargeted class with respect to the targeted one. Indeed, the cross entropy combined with the softmax function carries more about the absolute value of a class with respect to each other, which can induce blurred results regarding the optimization of the success rate. And because the wrong penalization of the class J impacts the probability of the targeted output, we suggest that the cross entropy does not totally reflect the probability distribution the adversary wants to optimize during the training process. In the following, this error, the error induced by the probability distribution, is called approximation errors and it highlights the deviation of the predicted distribution from the real unknown one. But however, the cross entropy loss function stays beneficial as Masurial suggests at Chess 2020. Indeed, Masurial demonstrates the benefits of the cross entropy loss function as it maximizes the perceived information introduced by Renault and Al at Euroclip 2011. So, more concretely, three sources of errors can be highlighted. So, first, the optimization error, already defined, characterizes the error induced by the learning process as well as the selection of a finite model space in order to obtain the optimal parametric model. Then, as the adversary maximizes an estimation, of the perceived information instead of the true perceived information, she needs an infinite number of traces in order to converge throughout this solution. And as in practice, she can only deal with a finite number of traces, the estimation error characterizes the gap between the empirical and the true perceived information. And finally, the approximation error defines the deviation between the perceived information estimated with the cross entropy loss function and the mutual information. This error is negligible if and only if the probability distribution associated with the optimal model minimizing the cross entropy loss function is similar to the true unknown probability distribution. So in our work, we propose a new loss function which derives from the success rate metric and prevent the approximation error effect. So when an adversary performs a sidechain attack, she aims at optimizing the success rate metric for a given number of traces such that this metric is defined as follows. So in other words, the adversary wants to optimize this probability such that the score related to the secret key is always higher than any other key hypothesis. So what the adversary wants in this scenario is to approximate the indicator function to make it easy to handle. And following the work provided by Kin Liu and Li, we know that a natural fashion consists in taking the sigma function in order to approximate the indicator function such that on the right side on this slide, we can see that depending on the value of alpha, we can monitor the approximation of the indicator function. So to optimize a trainable parameter that maximizes the success rate, the adversary has to apply the binary cross entropy in order to penalize the deviation of the model probabilities from the desired prediction. So in other words, we want to penalize the loss function when this expected relation is not observed. Thus, when the binary cross entropy is applied, the adversary obtains the following partial ranking loss function. 
So this result gives us an insight into how the cut function penalizes the training process when this relation is not respected. So therefore, maximizing the success rate tends to minimize the ranking error between the secret key k stars and any key hypothesis k. But in order to efficiently find the model that maximizes the ranking error, we have to apply this partial cut function on each key hypothesis in order to maximize the rank of the secret key. One interesting property with the ranking loss function that we demonstrate in our paper is that this new loss function can be considered as an upper bound of the attack success rate. Thus, minimizing the ranking loss directly optimizes the performance metric the adversary wants to maximize. But however, what are the benefits of considering the ranking loss instead of the cross entropy loss function? So first, let's back to the penalization process. So as a reminder, the adversary's goal is to find a model that maximizes the attack success rate such that during the profiling phase, the trainable parameters are updated in order to maximize this performance metric. So if the derivative is computed over k stars, the ranking loss pushes the score of the secret key up via gradient ascent. On the other hand, if the derivative is computed over an irrelevant output, the ranking loss pushes the score of each key hypothesis down via gradient descent such that this penalization only depends on the distance between k stars and j. So thus, in opposition to the cross entropy loss function, the score related to each other key hypothesis do not blur the penalization term. Indeed, for each pair k star k, there are two forces at the play, such that the force that each pair exerts is proportionate to the difference of the scores. So thus, the penalization process induced by the ranking loss maximizes the success rate, such that the approximation error induced by the cross entropy loss function is prevented. But from an optimal model perspective, what does this result mean? So if we denote D as a rule allowing the extraction of the targeted sensitive variable from a parametric model, we know that maximizing the success rate is equivalent to find an estimation of the optimal model such that finding the parameter theta that minimize this term is equivalent to the optimal distinguisher. And this process describes exactly what the ranking loss does during the training process. So while the ranking loss aims at finding the parameter theta that maximizes these functions, we can define a parametric model considering the ranking loss as a lower bound of the mutual information, such that if the adversary has an infinite number of profiling traces and optimal parameter theta, she retrieves the related mutual information, which is highly beneficial from an attack perspective, as it reflects the minimum number of attack traces needed to retrieve the secret key. So from an error analysis perspective, we observe that the minimization error as well as the estimation error still affect a model trend with the ranking loss, but the latter solution is beneficial to prevent the approximation error. So to verify all these theoretical observations through different scenarios, we decide to perform it on the most common database used in deep learning based sidechain analysis. So the ranking loss was performed on two public datasets and other datasets are studied in our paper. So first, the chip whisperer dataset is an unprotected emulation of AES-128 implemented in software on a chip whisperer board, which is composed by an 8-bit microcontroller. So due to the lack of countermeasures, the adversary can recover the secret key directly, and in this experiment, we attack the first S-box operation. Then, the ASCAD dataset is the first open database that has been specified to serve as common basis for further work in deep learning based such attacks. So the targeted platform is also an 8-bit microcontroller where a first-order masking is implemented with different levels of desynchronization. So to accurately define the performance of a neural network, we introduce a metric called NTGE that defines the number of traces that are needed for reaching a constant guessing entropy of 1. For being confident in our experiment, we perform 100 attacks and define NTGE bar as our future metric. From a practical perspective, the generation of suitable architectures is known as a difficult task. Hence, two kinds of models can be considered. So first, let's take a look at an example where the parametric model f theta exploits a partial set of points of interest on the chip whisper dataset. So once we capture the physical traces, we design a neural network such that first we consider the cross entropy loss function as a learning metric. Once the profiling model was trained, 
we used some visualization tools in order to assess the ability of the model to correctly retrieve the point of interest. So here we use the weight visualization introduced by Zaid and Al at just 2020. Once this phase was performed with the question entropy loss function, we applied exactly the same process with the ranking loss in order to compare the features retrieved by each model with the FNR computation. So our first observation suggests that both models successfully retrieved the point of interest located in the first 200 time samples. Indeed, this result coincides with the peaks returned by the FNR computation. But unfortunately, if we look more carefully at the model trend with the cross entropy loss function, an unexpected peak appears. And this peak is not detected by the FNR computation as well as the model trend with the ranking loss. So, while the model trained with the cross entropy loss function considers this peak as relevant for its making decision due to approximation error, its impact can be non-negligible during the expectation phase. Indeed, on this slide, we have felt the ability of each model to retrieve the secret key when additional Gaussian noise is applied. So through this slide, we can notice that the performance gap between both model increases with the level of the noise. Thus, if the optimization error induced in each model is similar, considering the ranking loss is beneficial as it directly optimizes the expected probability where the cross entropy loss function doesn't. The second scenario considered in this talk is the following. So if the adversary constructs models that exploit all the relevant information in the leakage traces, then she can ask which function is beneficial to converge faster toward the best attack performance. So as the models perfectly retrieve the point of interest, it can be assumed that the approximation error is negligible. Thus, in such context, only the optimization error and the estimation error hold. So by performing the attack on the ASCAD dataset, we plot the following graph, such that you can visualize the performance evolution of both models depending on the number of profiling traces used during the training process. Thus, in the y-axis, you can notice the NTGE bar value previously introduced. So when the ASCAD dataset is considered, we observe that the model trained with the ranking loss always converged faster toward the best attack performance solution, whatever the desynchronization level applied. Thus, given a fixed NTGE bar value, a model trained with the ranking loss always needs less profiling traces than a model trained with the question entropy loss function, such that in this example, using the ranking loss is beneficial to reduce the estimation error. To conclude about our work, we first link the learning to ring paradigm with the side channel approach such that it helps us to develop a new loss function that maximizes the attack success rate. Through this new proposition, we are more concerned with the relative order between the secret key and each key hypothesis such that it is beneficial to prevent the impact induced by the softmax function, which we called the approximation error. And obviously, this work is the starting point of assessing the benefits of the learning to rank approach in side chain attacks and further investigations should be made on other learning to rank approaches as a this wide approach for example. Finally, all of our results can be reproduced through a GitHub repository and if you have any question, do not hesitate to contact me over email. Thank you very much.